Hello, my name is Peter Parfitt and welcome to Newbrit Workshop. Now, I'm sorry for the bit of a pickle here in the workshop, but there is a very good reason for it. We're about to have installed an electric vehicle charger. Now, many of our visitors and one of our children has an electric vehicle. And so it seemed a good idea to give them the ability to top up here, particularly if they've driven 100 miles to come and say hello. And my intention is to make three videos. This first one is about a particular cable which is absolutely ideal for running the power to the electric vehicle charger. And in the next two videos, I'm going to show you, first of all, how to provide the information that installers need when they ask you to do a home survey prior to them coming to do the installation. And the final video, the third one, will show you parts of the actual installation process when the contractor who's fitting mine will be visiting the Newbrit workshop. Now, EV chargers require, of course, mains going into them, providing the power to to charge the vehicle, uh, but also uh, because they are intelligent devices which you might access or control through an app on your phone or whatever, they need to have the ability to communicate via either Wi-Fi or directly into your router. And on top of that, there's a third criteria that the majority of chargers have, and that is the ability to sense the amount of current that the whole household is drawing so that it can regulate the amount of current that's going to the car charging process in order to make sure that there is no overload of the main fuse coming into your property. Because if that main fuse goes, it can be a bit of a disaster, particularly if you've got the turkey in the oven. So in this video, we're talking about the cable. Now it's normal that the cable that's run from the charger into the house to the main distribution board is an armored cable. And that means it will have a sort of plastic outer core. Underneath that will be a steel protection layer of strands of steel wire. And then under that, there'll be the three conductors, live, neutral, and earth, that you require to go to your electricity supply. And in the old days, you had to have a separate cable which would provide your connection either to the internet or to the gadget that's providing the sensing of the current coming into the house. And it's this particular point I'm gonna show because I've been lucky enough to get hold of Doncaster Cable's EV Ultra cable. And they produce a series of cables. They're armored and they have the three mains cores in them, live, neutral, and earth. But they also have in the same protected layer, the ability to send data. And the data side of it is in a shielded cable within the actual protection of the overall cable itself. Now there are two types. One is that it has just two wires and that's what I need because all I need is the connection to the little gadget that's going to sense the amount of power that the house is drawing. And they have another one which has got Cat5 cable which is the sort of thing you'd need if you needed a physical connection to your router. And the particular cable I've got has a cross-sectional area of six square millimeters. They do one which is also four square millimeters. But my installer has said that six square millimeters is a good idea, so that's what I've got to show you today. Now, when I thought about the concept of producing this video, I contacted Doncaster Cables and they have very kindly sent me this sample, which is sufficient for my needs for today. Well, you might be saying to yourself, well, why worry about having the data cable inside the same envelope as the mains cable? Now, if you didn't have that, you'd have to have two separate cables, the armored cable and then a separate data cable coming from the back of the charger and following whatever circuitous route it might be to the main distribution panel in your house, garage, or in my case, workshop. And having it all in one package certainly makes installation easier. It will cut the cost of installation in terms of the time that the installer is on site. And it will also make a neater job when the homeowner looks up and sees just one cable going around his garage or workshop or whatever it might be, rather than a two. And the, the data cable can look a bit untidy because it's very thin and it might droop and so on. Now, although today I've been talking about EV charger installation for the use of this Doncaster EV Ultra cable, there's many other uses. If you've got oh, electric gates 
uh, which need not only mains power, but there might be a button at the front to press or a keypad, and you need to get data from the gate to the house or vice versa, then this is ideal because there'll be just one cable and everything's in there. If you own a caravan site, every pitch has to have electricity. And these days, many pitches have either internet plug-in, TV plug-in, or whatever. Or it may be that that data cable built into the armoured cable is what's needed by the owner to monitor the amount of electricity individual campers are using. And if you've got a, a home office in the garden, and let's face it, these days it's getting a more popular thing to have, even if it's only a garden shed, then having power and data, an internet connection maybe, or telephone line, whatever that might be, is absolutely perfect. It may be that your workshop is at the bottom of the garden in a shed that you built, then this is the answer and very easy to do. Now, my charger is gonna be on the other side of this wall here. And it's gonna be probably about this height. So I'm gonna have the armored cable coming out through here. Now, bearing in mind this cable is pretty stiff. So I've gotta think very carefully about the routing of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill all the way through to here. I'm then gonna allow the cable to drop down, go along, and then go up and along at ceiling level. And the advantage of that is, is that when the installer needs that extra slack on the outside, I can give him some extra slack from in here. And when he's finished, I can draw that back and then do the final fixing of the cable against this wall. This is all going to be more or less hidden by my wood rack, which will go back in place. Now, every installation will be different. It may be that uh, your installer can go under the floorboards, it could go in the attic of the workshop, and then down at the distribution board, uh, but everyone's gonna be different. And I will talk about uh, routes and so on and so forth when I come to the second video. I'm now gonna just drill the holes for this, and I'm gonna set up the run of this cable. Now, this gadget may look a little bit odd, but let me explain. I've got soundproofing on the inside of all the brick walls of my workshop. And this is about 100 millimeters deep. And the inner layer here is plasterboard. But behind this is some of the sort of rock wall type material that is used for soundproofing and insulation. Now, if I were to drill all the way through with my normal masonry bit, the insulation would start wrapping itself around the drill. And it really would be a bit of a, a nonsense. It might then be difficult to get the drill bit out. So what I've done is I've stopped short of this. As soon as I felt myself going through the brickwork, I've stopped and I'm then going to use this. Now this is a piece of tubing and you may be able to see in the end here, I've put a drill bit. So in other words, what I've created is a really long drill bit. And I'm gonna put this through the hole on the outside and then just very quietly make a little exit hole on this side. And then I can cut away a little bit and make a bit of a space so the insulation isn't gonna get caught up on that drill. But well, this is where the charge is going to go. I'm now gonna drill the very first hole uh, just here. I hope you would have noticed that I took that very gingerly because when I went through the second layer of brickwork, I didn't want to get caught up in that insulation material. Now, I've never tried this before. I have no clue whether it will work or not. Well, I hope you can see this is where that's come out. Uh, the, the drill bit's actually been pushed up inside, but, but it doesn't matter. That's come through nice and cleanly. That means now that I can do the rest of the work. And that was a 25 millimeter drill, just to give an extra bit of clearance here, uh, where the back of the compression gland will go, holds the cable to the charger. Now I'm stripping a generous amount of the outer plastic cover and the, and the steel wires. It makes it easier for the installer. Uh, and I like to start by scoring the line here, and then scoring the steel wires, which are here, uh, by going through my little place here and very carefully sawing, not all the way through. You'll, you'll get used to how much to do eventually <laughs> if you're new to this. And when you think you've gone through enough, 
uh, you then strip away the black plastic. Just score a line along its length. So I've scored that down. And if I scored this enough, if I pull out just an example here, and then I'm going to bend this back on itself, a couple of twiddles, and it comes away. And just watch your eyes when you're doing this. I'm wearing glasses, so it shouldn't be too bad. And that's it, that's the last of that steel wire gone now. And that's what I'm going to leave for the installer. So he's got plenty on the outside where he needs to connect to the charger. Now you can see the quite neat hole just there where my piece of brass uh, tubing came through. I'm now using one of these little saws. It looks like a, a hacksaw, but it's got a tapered thing on there. So it's quite easy to use on plasterboard. And I'm just taking this down. You imagine the cable is coming straight out through uh, the wall. And I then want it to bend down and then go along and then it'll go up. And in order to make that easy, it's got to come down and around like that. So I've got to allow for the curve. Now I've fed my cable through the wall, it's sticking out the other side. And I've put a little bit of tape here. That piece of tape tells me that when that is there, then the finishing armoured part of the cable is just flush with the wall outside. Right, I think you can see how this is going. I've got my little loop down the bottom here, which is my reserve bit so it can go to and fro. This will get fixed to the wall in due course. And then going up here is my straight vertical bit. I've then got to carry this along, along the top of this wall and along the top of the wall, which is over there. Now, when it comes to bending armoured cable around corners and so on, uh, you've got to be very careful. You've got to follow the manufacturer's recommendation. Now with the Doncaster Ultra EV cable I've got, I have the six square millimeter cross-section conductors, but the outer diameter of that cable is 18 and a half millimeters. Let's round it up to 90. And Doncaster recommend a minimum bend radius of eight times. So eight times 19 is 152 millimeters. Now for me, that doesn't really matter for the bends that I've done behind my wood storage area. Uh, but if we come over here and you can see now I'm going to be coming down uh, from that line along the ceiling and down towards the electrical connection down here somewhere. So that top bend, I want that to be pretty tight. But I now know I can only have a minimum radius of 152 millimeters. Now in order to make this easy I'm going to make up a little template and in order to do this you need to go and eat a box of biscuits and then use the cardboard and I'm just going to cut off a piece of the lid now. now I've taken my little compass gadget here which is set to 152 millimeters and I've drawn uh, a line all the way along there and I'm just going to cut around here like so. So now you can imagine this is the inner edge of the cable. The cable will be going around on the outside. But I'm going to have these clips and so I can now judge where the clips should be by looking at where the hole is here and where the edge here will be following that line. And it's very easy to make an estimate that the one on the end is going to be about there. The one on this end here is going to be about there. And if I want one in the middle, which I think it might be a useful idea, then I need one about here. So I now know where the centers are, or the screw holes should be, for my cable clips. And that then gives me that uh, minimum curve recommended by Doncaster cables. Now, in order to make it easy uh, to position these holes on the wall so I can mark them, I'm going to make a hole in the cardboard where each hole should be so that I can then put a little uh, pencil through and mark the wall. Now, do you remember that uh, little bit of brass tubing I used when I did the drilling? Well, I've cut a little bit off the end and I'm going to just use it like so, like a punch.
right, so there we go. I've now got three nice holes in there and I can now use my template very easily. Right, I've put uh, three marks on there. Uh, this top one, um, rather than the clip going uh, underneath the cable, I've got the clips, the screw for the clip going at the top and uh, that will help it get around the corner. And I've got two holes to drill in the bricks here and I'll probably need another uh, one down here. Now with this first one, because uh, I don't have any batten on this side, but I've got batten there, I put a distance piece so that there's no pressure in, invoked between this armour cable and that bit of trunking. So that's there. And that's it, and that's that bend. And it's not too tight, uh, but it's tidy. Well, uh, that little template worked. Now, I'm very pleased with the way this cable has gone in. It's quite difficult because it's thick and it's stiff, uh, but you just have to persevere. And if an old guy like me can do it, you can do it too. Now, in the next video, I'm going to show you what you need to do is should your installer require you to do a site survey, taking photographs and letting them know what your particular property looks like. And in the final video, I'll give you an idea of what my installer had to do when he came here to fit the EV charger.